We got market watcher Gary Kalpam with us, Charlie Gasparino, America Rising Executive Director, Alexandra Smith. Alexandra, end with you, began with you. Uh, leading out the sad face deal here, are you concerned that the president could, could veto this and all of a sudden all bets are off? Well, you know, if I could read the tea leaves, I'd be the richest person at this table. So I can't ever say definitively not as rich as Gary. <laughs> what will happen for sure or not. But what I do know is that I think that what the president is trying to do is he's trying to reach out to that base, right? So in the spending bill, you have a lot of uh, incentives for Democrats who voted for it. Um, you have an increase in military spending for the Hawks who were enticed to vote for it. But so why did the president do this? <laughs> I think it's really to just to reach out to his base to show them that he still, you know, he still can, he still thinks that the border wall is important, um, that it's still something that he's going to be fighting for. But as Speaker Ryan mentioned, you could look at a lot of the spending in this bill as sort of a down payment on the wall. All right. So he can kind of have his cake and eat it too yeah. Gary, and, and, and say, I don't like this, but, you know, but it does kind of whipsaw people, right? Uh, I have absolutely no clue where he's going with this. I You're have not. not a I, 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 absolutely, uh, I, and I'm going to hire that guy from my office. He's I can good. tell you that. Mm. Uh, all I can tell you is, is that we have a spending bill, and you know everybody's talking about why markets are down. We have a spending bill that ensures trillion-dollar deficits infinitum. That eventually, the first trillion of our taxpayer dollars is going to go towards interest payments. That's going to crowd out the economy. If that doesn't provide a headwind for the, for the economy as well as markets. You're saying, I don't know what does. So uh, I, I don't even know what to say. DACA this, DACA that. All I can tell you is I hope they go back to square one. I don't mind if they shut down the government for a week, come back with something better. But I think uh, the die has been cast and uh, deficits are skyrocketing and debt is uh, going to get out of hand it's, continuously. It's definitely there. And of course, it, it, this particularly is out of the way, assuming that the president doesn't do this or act on this. But I, I am curious to what you make of the trade tariff situation and the response particularly we've gotten out of the White House. Not good, but if you really want to get into Trump's brains, you have to go one up from that dude. Get Kreskin on here. Yes. Because yes. I mean, <laughs> Kreskin could maybe, maybe figure out what he's talking about. I mean, I was, I spoke to a lot of people on the Hill today, some of my sources, and I say, okay, tell me, why did, why did Trump do an about face on, on, the, on the spending bill? You know, it was all apparently signed off. Everybody agreed on it, and they were like, we don't know. Then I said, and at oh, the last second. Yeah. <laughs> so the then last I said, second, yeah. and said, well, why is he doing this stuff with tariffs? Like using, instead of like, trying to like at least thread the needle a little bit, talk, talk big, carry, talk. Well, maybe he was right, Charlie. Look at the response the Chinese gave. It was rather muted. Right. But look at the response the market gave. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, I'm just, you're not seizing I, on a moment here. By, uh, but I'm just saying that um, using the, being a, a blunt instrument on trade is generally not Listen, everybody knows China cheats, right? We're there. We, everybody agrees on that. It's how do you address the cheating? And the, the blunt force of tariffs generally hurts us more than it helps us. And China is a big market for a lot of our manufacturers. We, it, it, they're a necessary evil. I'm sorry. We have to deal with them. How we deal with that is, is really key. And the blunt force of what he's doing, most investors I speak to and most smart people that understand the economy thinks is absurd. And I got a little sum for you. U.S. Steel is down 30% in the last 10 trading days and dropped 12% yesterday. I thought these tariffs are supposed to help our steel companies mm -hmm. and look at the stocks, billion dollars of market cap, billions of dollars yeah, of market cap. Now that's odd. Why do you think so since, since that's, well, that covers the period of the implementation of the tariffs? You so, got it. But why is that? Uh, beats the heck out of me. The, uh, we were told by everybody it's going to help these uh, steel companies, well, and it's it done the exact opposite. It. Maybe it would have. And by the way, and by the way, there are other factors here, right? Right. But here's the big thing. I mean, we, they're all we, caught up in the same downdraft. Uh, yeah, I talked about uncertainty for eight years under Obama. All these tariffs do is put just more uncertainty in the system. As he said, the president says, we're going to do more tariffs. We're gonna, and he also talked about his trade rep, find me more targets. That's just more uncertainty for business, business planners, and the markets itself. You know, we, we have no certainty yeah. at this Gary, point in time. Getting back to your point about steel and why, and why the conundrum of why it, it's down amid the tariffs. Yesterday, the bonds actually, uh, yields went down yesterday on the 10 and the Big 30, time. right? Even as we lost 700 points on the, on the Dow, there is a trade out there that, and this might be reflective of that, of what's going on there, that we, the economy might be slowing down. 
I'm telling you that there. Flight to let quality. Ask, yeah, and let me ask you uh, about that, Alexander, because that it was interesting that Charlie mentioned. See, sometimes it, it's a, I, I actually it's a moment. catch. It's like a right. broken clock. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Right. But in all seriousness, that, that people were looking at bonds as a flight to quality, safe haven, et cetera, and the stuff that Gary's taught me for years. But there was something else going on, and, I, and I've heard this echoed before to Charlie's point that uh, the flattening yield curve issue, things potentially slowing down, housing not quite what it was, retail sales not quite what they were. What do you make of that? I mean, look, I think that the market yesterday was surprised. We've been hearing um, so much about these tariffs. We've, there had been news and chatter. And then finally, when it happened, I think it was sort of a shock. Um, I think that's why you saw gold rise, the yen rise. Um, and so I think that there was definitely sort of a, a short-term systematic response to, to all of this. But do this. you think it's justified? But, I mean, when you talk to your clients, do you say, you know, We've had a good long run here. I mean, and, and, and there's a comeuppance. This is the comeuppance. I mean, yeah. I mean, look, I think that, uh, you know, the stock market is up overall since um, the election in 2016, yeah. up 30%. Lot. But, yeah. um, but, so but think but, about why the stock market's up. It's kind of interesting. We were talking about this in the green room. When the naysayers on Trump, like the Mark Cubans and even Hillary Clinton, but Mark Cubans. Charlie Gasparinos. No, I didn't say this because I, I like his tax cuts. They were saying he was going to blow up. They think you hate him. I don't. Stop <laughs> it. I li- actually You're personally blocking. like him. What's the matter? You see the little things? <laughs> <laughs> if you don't stop it, I'm going to unbutton this right, and right, show you right, my right. gold chains. Um, but they, the naysayers of the markets, the Mark Cubans, said that you know Trump was going to blow up the economy because he's going to do two things. He's going to spend like crazy, and and he's going to do enter into a trade war. Uh, they said we don't care how much he, he tries to cut taxes. So what Trump did was interesting. In the first in the in his first year, he stayed away from the trade stuff and he cut taxes and clamped down and and sort of deregulated the economy, which pushed the market up. Now he's going back to the stuff that a lot of people that people were scared of initially, and that has got the market scared. I mean, it's it's clear that markets. Do you think the had, shutdown has anyone scared? Do you think? I, I know it's old hat. Uh, you and you've written about. It over the years because it happened so frequently that even if it came to that point the president vetoed this that uh, I, I know the short-term immediate reaction sell 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 much as when you impose tariffs the immediate reaction sell and then they cool or calm down what do you think we can only go by history shutdowns don't last a long time the longest one i think was three weeks a couple of them went last two weeks and then a few last a few days so i i don't think that's the biggest you deal would've... something you yeah. just said that's really important is that we had a pro-growth president and now if you think about it did you ever expect republicans to come out with a spending bill like this and massive tariffs. And these are massive and talking about a lot more. That never works. It's never helped markets in the past. And you're seeing the comeuppance. Now, so, keep in mind, though, we were up big. We were due for pullback, right. but we're getting the catalyst. But could I raise something with you? And it, it is an interesting point. Our Charles Payne had raised the point of everyone, including geniuses like Gary and Charlie, have concerns about a, a tr- possible trade war. Then maybe just for the hell of it, you ought to look into the wisdom of being against the crowds here. Mm-hmm. And uh, Charles Payne's point was, we do know, and, and Gaspar touched on it, that the, the Chinese cheat and they do rig their markets. It's very difficult to sell in their market or you don't see a lot of American cars in their country. And uh, this has been going on and under Republican and Democratic presidents. They've all been responding the same way, hoping for different results. They don't get the different results. So this might offer some wisdom that we're, we're not seeing. In other words, it could be a good thing, not a bad thing. Sure. I mean, undoubtedly, China is, is, a, is a bad actor in this situation. They've not lived up to their obligations under the World Trade so Organization. So are you okay with this in-your-face <laughs> they, response? I mean, well, I mean, like, look, the intellectual property alone, uh, the theft of, uh, thereof is, is absolutely appalling. That being said, I think that, you know, one thing you can maybe look at in all of this, I'm, I'm, I'm opposed to tariffs as just a general proposition, but if you look at the 45 days... Even though days, China has its own tariffs. Yes, I, I I, don't, I think that so you're probably opposed to them as well. Well, look, I mean, I think that in a in a free market, you know, this is going to come back on American consumers as well. But, but theirs uh, isn't a free market. But, they screw us royally. <laughs> well, they buy no, our look, debt. But, Capital flows help to help pay I our understand, debt. I understand. I understand. And by the way, they keep inflation low. And by the way, so we live with that and take the good for the bad. But, but not only that, Neil, we do sell stuff there. Can I? I, 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 I understand. I understand. But better. it is a rig market. That's what the. Oh, f- let me just say one thing about it, the rig market, which I hate rig markets, but all this dumping of all this stuff here keeps prices down, keep, keeps costs down wow. for companies nice here. So it. It, it's, it, it is a, it's well, why not the coolest Why do you think, the, the why do you think automobile spin? manufacturers are against the tariffs? 
The, and by the way, we should point well, they're out. They're against the because it's going to raise the price of their cars. Right, which they build here, which they actually have more manpower building cars than you'd use in, in steel manufacturing because right. that's f- extremely automated. I'm just saying that, you know. Is this going to be resolved real quickly? No. Uh, it doesn't <laughs> look that way. What do you think? Interesting bedfellows are being made here because you have Democrats who are praising uh, President Trump for these tariffs. But I look to a senator like Claire McCaskill. She has farmers in her state to worry about, and she's opposed the president all day long on on taxes, on health care. And all of a sudden now she's going to be standing against him on on tariffs as well. And China will come after the farm belt, no doubt, just to to stick it to him, I can promise you, because they know that's a a place that he gets a lot of votes from. So watch how that plays out. Forty five days. He he made sure to make sure these are implemented in 45 days. So we'll watch it very closely. Guys, thank you very, very much.